Hi guys, and um, welcome to Energy in Motion. Today we are so grateful and thrilled and excited to be sharing this space with Satsuki. And this is her beautiful home and her beautiful workspace that she's allowed us to partake in. She's an incredible watercolor artist who's expanding into other mediums and has released a book that's actually sold out, which we'll share a little bit more about as uh, as the time rolls. But um, we're really excited to share this interview with you guys and uh, get to know a little bit more about you. Thank you for coming. Thank yeah, you thank for you having us. us. Oh, thank you. We've been so excited to come and talk to you because your work is just so moving. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we've been definitely looking forward to seeing you both. And, um, you know, like we were sharing earlier, but it's just nice to be able to connect with others who are doing different work, still in the creative field. But, mm -hmm. yeah, so it's inspiring. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We feel inspired by you yeah. as well. Can you start by telling us what the most joyful part of creating is for you? I think for myself, creating is a way of communicating. Um, I'm naturally a little bit more of an introvert, as I'm sure a lot of artists tend to be. And so sometimes I'm not able to articulate, maybe with words or mm -hmm. in a conversation, I might not be able to say to people what I'm feeling in the depths of my soul. And I feel that by creating art and by writing poetry or some other way of expression that it's a way for others to tune into that deeper part of myself and hopefully I feel at the end of the day the essence of who we are is all the same like we all could relate to one another and so I feel by creating it's in a way to connect with people on that deeper level and for all of us to be able to be inspired by each other, because I feel that way when I look at other people's creative work, mm -hmm. for example, like a dancer, mm -hmm. you know, who's sharing themselves through their motion and um, movement, you know, it's very moving when it comes from who they are. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can tell, you know, and it's, you know, it brings people to tears sometimes, even if they're not speaking um, a word, you know, mm -hmm. so there's something really powerful about, I think, creation and creativity as a whole. And I feel that, you know, the, the part that I play in all of that is through art and sometimes words. Mm. Yeah, I love that. And a great thing, but you know, it's part of why we started this was because we wanted to connect with other people through their art and their emotion and their energy. And um, that's been such a blessing. And it does, creativity does bind us together and connects us, which is a really special place to be. Yeah. And often, too, with artists, I feel sometimes you get to know someone's work um, and not so much them or where that comes from. And I think a lot for me through energy and motion, having the ability to get to know the artist better uh, was and it has been such a powerful experience. It just sort of gives you a different perspective and, you know, some more insight. Mm -hmm. So... When, you're, when you are creating, and um, you were telling us a little bit before we started the interview about how you flow through the seasons and how you feel like your creative process is, can you share a little bit of that with us? Sure. So I, I think that before I hit a wall and I, and I got very sick and I had to check out for about a year and a half of mm -hmm. doing anything creative, up until that point, my philosophy was really different. It was about cranking things out, you know, hustling, making money, getting the contacts, you know, a lot of things that I think you are almost brainwashed to believe that you need to do in order to succeed. And that was my daily routine. Uh, and I didn't think anything of it. And once I got sick, it gave me an opportunity to really think about why I'm doing what I'm doing. And it's like, am I doing it the right way? Obviously not if I'm getting sick. Mm -hmm. And so I started to reflect upon what does it even mean then for me to be a creative? And I realize that every person has their own rhythm. It doesn't necessarily mean that the people who are cranking it and doing it day and day out, that that's a bad thing. That's probably them. And But for myself, I work at a definitely a, a slower pace. And by working slower, I'm definitely more intuitive about my work. It gives me time to pause and to wonder about you know, why I'm doing what I'm doing and bring meaning into the work, which I think is really important, at least for myself, mm -hmm. to continue doing it long term. And within that rhythm, I realized I'm very much in tune with nature and the idea of seasons and how 
what that really means, not only in terms of just creativity, but as a whole, I think that that's a very natural thing for all of us. You know, with animals, they move within the seasons. I mean, we grow our food in seasons. You know, it's like, I, I think it's just a natural thing being on Earth, that that's the way that we're built. And so I started to wonder, well, what does that look in my practice, you know, seasons? And it's not necessarily right on the dot where it's like, okay, it's May, that means I'm in spring, but it's more of an internal clock, you know, and sometimes for me, Spring could be a long time where it's like the ideation process, where I'm really researching and like digging into the process of like, what do I want to say? What do I want to communicate? What's resonating with me? And once that formulates, then I move into summer. And summer is when I'm starting to push things out, I'm talking to people about it, people are coming on board of projects. Um, and it's kind of building out that, that idea. And then when fall hits, it's I start to notice that, okay, maybe I'm in fall is when people are maybe starting to purchase the product if it's like a sellable item or if it's a painting then I might do an exhibition or something. So it's more about sharing, mm -hmm. not so much building. And then when the, after that, I'll start to get, honestly, I'll start to get a little tired, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, naturally I start feeling like, okay, I think I'm ready to go into hibernation mode and I call it my um, hermit mode. Mm -hmm. Like I kind of go into hermit land. So uh, it's when I get really quiet, you know, I'm, I don't disappear, but it's a very introspective time for me where I give myself time to rest um, you know, read books, meet friends, um, and kind of gather that energy that I've been pushing out and seeing where it takes me next. And so it's, for me, winter is actually really exciting because it's a time where I'm realizing what I've done, but it's also a time where I'm starting to think, starting to dream. It's not even ide ideation. It's really like, you know, openness to dream about, okay, what do I want to do next? Like, what's calling out to me? Who's inspiring me? And it's just that moment to be free and kind of flowing. So I feel that I'm currently in that place right now, mm -hmm. kind of coming into winter. And before I'd be really scared because it means that I might not be pushing out as much. I might not be as visible, but I truly believe that's a very important time to spend. And I do like to tell people that, you know, every person needs time to slow down. Mm -hmm. um, so even if it's a day, you know, take some time for yourself. So that's kind of been the rhythm. Mm. Yeah. And I think society tells us so much that resting is bad or you're going to fall behind or you're trying to you know, just create fear. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that when you made that shift that your business looked different and that your art looked different? I think so. I, I feel that at first it was really difficult for people to understand that. Like when I would talk to others about that you know, that feels like your business is shrinking. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I would even question that when people would say that to me, like, wait, am I going backwards? Or mm -hmm. is this really a good idea? But I feel that because I believe how strongly it helps the artist, and I know that I've pushed out stronger work because of that moment of quiet and reflection, that it works. And it's really important. So it, it was scary. I think the first, mm, how many times? I've been through this cycle a few times now, but I would say like the first two winters, for me at least, were really frightening because honestly there are times when you're making no income, you know, and that's nerve wracking, you know, you start to kind of question like, hey, is this okay? But spring always comes, you know, it's, it does in a very strange way and you meet people or projects come that you wouldn't have been prepared for if you didn't have that winter. So it's a really interesting phenomenon like it's like you kind of let go mm -hmm. and just let things be mm -hmm. and you listen to your body and what it's telling you if it's telling you to rest there must be a reason and not fight it um i think that's been yeah trusting i think that's yeah. been kind of like the biggest the biggest thing that i've learned through this process mm -hmm. trust and surrender yeah we, yeah we you know um we we talk a lot about that and we try to spend a lot of time uh being in touch with our beings and, and, and flowing and even in energy and motion trying to find that rhythm and you know it's interesting right it's it, it, we totally feel you when we're like ah but we're not producing but there's also that time where you've got to like marinate and create the creativity and and uh, we always say like the tide comes in and the tide comes out you know and you just have to learn the rhythm of the universe and what that rhythm is for you and that is subjective for everyone but right. that's just really beautiful to hear because it's just um it's inspiring and it's motivating and it, and it feels um, I, like I said to you before we turned on the cameras, we were having a conversation about 
uh, authenticity and the importance of authenticity as a human and as an artist and it's just very authentic <laughs> you know and, and and I love that I love that when when and maybe you don't have these uh, maybe you don't come up against these situations because of the current uh, flow that you've created for yourself but when you do have a creative block and when you do face uh, some fears or come across something that you may feel is a failure at the moment, uh, how do you sort of move through that? Um, I, I hit it often, <laughs> quite often where I'm questioning or, you know, is, and you, you know, you come across, I mean, I think if you're doing a business, you always come across difficult situations. Uh, and my approach has always been to be mindful about the other person's position, why they're bringing that type of situation to you? Is there something for me to learn from it? And then it's always trying to be mindful as much as I can. Sometimes, you know, it's very emotionally charged mm -hmm. and you have to kind of, for me at least, kind of take a step back, you know, catch my breath and be like, okay, I, you know, what is it that I want to accomplish out of this situation? Do I want to move forward with something? Do I not? Uh, how, what kind of relationship do I want to cultivate with that person? At the end of the day, even if it doesn't work, I want to be able to part not having negative feelings about the, about the incident, but more on, on the terms of it didn't work out now, but maybe it'll work out in the future. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just not meant to be right now. So anytime I hit like a creative block for myself personally, or if it's a block within like the business, you know, proposition or project, it's always about tuning back into myself, thinking about, okay, what is it that is most important to me right now? What is the purpose of what I'm doing? What is the purpose of the project that's coming into the studio? Like all these things, I, I try to break down as much as possible and then approach it as compassionately as I can, but still staying firm to my own vision, you know, because I feel that people respect those who can build their boundaries, but in a way that's respectful and that is very thoughtful. Um, so I try to choose my words very wisely. I try to think about how the person can hear the words. I think that's another thing that is really interesting is that you might think what you're saying is resonating with the other person, but they might not hear it. So it's always about thinking about, okay, how can I say it in a way that they'll hear it, that they'll make sense to them? Am I communicating that correctly? And sometimes it takes a few tries, but I think as long as that, that intention is there, then I'm able to either break through a barrier that might have been there before. It might have been something simple, you know, just changing words here and there or my approach. Um, and even with my own self, if I come through to a creative block, I always kind of ask myself, like, okay, what's the block about? Am I just tired? Do I need a, a nap? You know, and I'll kind of go take a nap. Or is it something bigger? Is, this, is it that I'm trying to force something that isn't really there? So it's always checking in with myself because I, I feel that, um, with anything, there is a root cause. And so I think going to the root of the matter is the most important. And sometimes that just takes a little bit of, you know, you just have to step back, take a breather, and be okay with that. Like, you don't have to keep pushing mm -hmm. for things to happen. Mm -hmm. Is there a space or, like, something that you do to create, to mm -hmm. take that space for yourself? Is there, a, you know, a sacred uh, sort of space that you take or, or walks or, you know, I don't know? Yeah, so um, overall I have a morning practice, so it consists of meditating in the morning, um, 15 to 20 minutes usually, more or less depending on what's happening. And then I'll read some material, whether it's um, a book about spirituality or anything that kind of changes or shifts my perspective, kind of to give the color of the day. And then I will do um, some journaling to like reflect on the thoughts that are in my mind, um, making sure that things are connecting, that are making sense. So that's been the, the base of kind of my, not just my practice as an artist, but I think in life, I think it's, it's helped me to really stay grounded. Um, but other things, sometimes, you know, if things are tough in the middle of the day, I'll just turn off the work and I'll, I watch Japanese videos, like comedy shows, because mm -hmm. it helps with my Japanese. Mm -hmm. But it also just takes my mind off of things. So I'll just kind of sit there and watch. <laughs> and then sometimes, you know, it'll just help, you know, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll laugh and then it'll be like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. You know, mm -hmm. it's like okay you know and then I'll go back to doing work so I think it's important to like do other things you know <laughs> have to it's let okay. that ring 
And someone's calling. <laughs> that's okay. That's like Oh, that's okay. Wrong. Okay. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I, I, yeah, I think it's totally okay. As, as long as, I feel like the, when someone hits a bump is when you kind of go down that path. So social media is a big one. Like people take a break looking at Facebook mm. or Instagram. Um, that I think is a little bit, can be good or bad. Mm. You can kind of go down the rabbit hole, mm-hmm. yeah. So, but other things, yeah, I think it's fine. Use to give you a ring. Uh, give me a call. I'm looking at your backyard. Your backyard, <laughs> unfortunately, isn't going to be anywhere near big enough to satisfy setbacks for a structure with a permit, um, especially one that you're going to make livable by the city standards as far as the toilet. Oh, no, I know what it is. Uh, but give so, we're in the middle of trying to build a studio because I'm, I'm kind of growing out of this one. Oh, yeah, that's so, a good thing. Yes, it's a good thing. That's exciting. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Very yeah. Exciting. <laughs> so that's what the call's about, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, we were like talking to some, some people, builders and stuff. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, sorry. That's perfect. Expanding and growing. Yeah. That's, I love that. You, I've noticed you're, um, you teach a lot. And yeah, I guess we were at Otis the other day. Mm-hmm. I saw you were live there. I'm sure Mario was helping with that, but you're just so um, great about how you express yourself, and it's a way that I think that people can really learn from and grow and grasp onto. What if you could give any piece of advice to an up-and-coming artist? What would you say to them? I know you have wonder all lots of wonderful things you would say, but oh, man, that's so hard. Um, I think. If you don't believe in yourself, then no one will. Because I feel like when you're just starting out, you, you're questioning yourself. Like, am I good enough? And then you see other people's work that's better. And that never changes. You can be working for five, ten years. It's still going to be that. You'll find someone else is working like, oh my gosh, I suck. You know? And, yeah. <laughs> um, but, but that's okay. You know, there, there are people, you know, who do things differently. It doesn't mean it's good or bad or better or worse. It's just different. Mm-hmm. But I think the, the biggest thing that I wish I knew when I was coming out of school was that people, if you want people to work with you or even to come into your world, not even work-wise, just in general, if you don't put out what you believe in as an individual or even as an artist, how can you expect someone else to in you and it's not about being you know egotistical or like oh I'm the best it's I think it's truly about do you believe in the work that you do do you love it Mm -hmm. and why do you want to share that with people you know why should they come into your world Um, if you can express that in a way that's genuine and honest it can be a little awkward I think that's fine when you're a student you know when you're just coming out you don't know but that feeling of being excited about what you do or that that emotion of like wanting it to be out in the world I think that is really key to having your first job or your first client or your first collector I think that's what people resonate with you know that's why they'll decide okay I'll take a chance on so and so you know to work with them on something or um, I'll start collecting their work because I feel like they're gonna go somewhere so I would say yeah Try to find that, whatever that means to that person. Mm. Yeah. That's probably an ever-evolving thing for us to constantly redefine and learn mm-hmm. and work on as well as rechecking in and believing and believing in yeah. your work and, mm. and doing that probably with your seasons as well, which is mm-hmm. a beautiful lesson and thing to constantly keep in the back of your mind. Yeah, it's a struggle. Yeah. It's always a struggle because every day, day in and day out, you know, thankfully we connect because of the internet, but also there's more ways for us to compare. Mm-hmm. And so it's a constant needing to be conscious mm-hmm. all the time, checking in. You know, it's easy to slip in that direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a day, daily practice. Yeah. yeah. Every day. Yeah. Um, what did you want to be when you were a little girl? When I was a little girl? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, I, the one, the things that come up in my mind, so my mom's really good friend was um, a waitress, mm. and I thought she was so beautiful, so I'm like, oh. I want to be a waitress, <laughs> which I have tried, so that, that part's cleared, and then, um, check. yeah, check, <laughs> and then uh, I wanted to be a veterinarian, mm. 
but then I saw what vets go through, and I'm like, mm -hmm. I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then, strangely enough, um, so I never really connected with being an artist as an adult. I, I don't know, it just never... My background's in music and graphic design, mm -hmm. and so I never was able to own being an artist as my title. Um, and then when I was going through, my parents had recently moved, and so I was kind of rummaging through my old stuff, and I came across this book that I made in fifth grade, and we had illustrated our life path, like certain milestones. And then on the year that I was supposed to go to college, I had drawn a picture of Yale. I didn't go to Yale, but I wanted to go to Yale at the time. And on top of that, I had written, I'm going to go to Yale on an art scholarship. And so I think somewhere deep inside, I knew I wanted to be an artist. But I never thought about that. Mm. It's so strange. Like, I never thought about that until I saw it, and I was like, there it is. There is a proof <laughs> right there. Oh, yeah, so. You came full circle. Yeah, so I came from <laughs> full circle without really realizing. But I've always loved art, I think, or creativity in general. Where did it sort of, what part is that when it sort of started to surge out of your life as you graduated college and, and such, or you just sort of found it? Um, so I've studied music since I was three, like I studied classical piano. Mm -hmm. And so naturally something inside me felt that maybe music is my thing because I've known it for so long, but I've always loved to draw and color and art's always been also a part of my everyday. But growing up in a very traditional Asian household, you're expected to do things that are more solid, quote unquote, you know, so like doctor or lawyer, you know, and, and I've never been the most interested in academics. So my grades weren't the best. <laughs> um, if I enjoyed it, yes. But otherwise, you know, it, it was a real struggle for me, um, whereas art and music were just, you know, really easy classes. And I remember going graduating from high school and telling my parents, like, you know, I'm going to do international business. And they're like, oh, that's great. You know, but nowhere inside me was I thinking, like, I could do it. But I was just saying it because all my other classmates were, like, going into law and doctor, and I just felt like I had to say something. But the creativity really started as a potential career is when I hit college and I started to study music seriously. Mm -hmm. And I saw other serious musicians around me, like pianists, violinists, um, people who are practicing like 12 hours a day, 14 hours a day. And I think that's when I started to realize, okay, this is serious stuff. Mm -hmm. It's not just playing for fun anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's when I started to think about art as a career and really kind of diving into what that meant. Mm -hmm. Did you always paint? No. When did you find painting? So I tried painting... I think it was just like half a year when I was really young and I, I nothing about it was interesting to me. I'm like, oh, this is so boring. <laughs> so I quit. <laughs> and then, so that year and a half when I got really sick, before that I was doing graphic design and product design. And then I just got so overwhelmed and I got really sick and I had to quit everything. And during that time, I really got back in tune with the spiritual side of myself. Uh, and I started to meditate more. And it was actually through a psychologist a traditional psychologist that suggested I start to re, um, retrace my steps, my spiritual steps, not religion, but like mm -hmm. as a soul. Mm -hmm. And through that process, I realized ever since I was little, as far as I can remember, I've been very in tune of people's energies and auras. I can see colors, all these things that I can't tell people mm -hmm. about when you're little because you get treated weird. Mm -hmm. You know, people are like, oh, you're so strange. And... <laughs> <laughs> we relate. Okay, okay, yeah. You know, this is just, you have to be normal, you know. And so I would constantly try to be normal. Mm -hmm. And but during that year and a half when I started to tune into that part of myself, things became really clear and that sorry. And it's okay. <laughs> yeah, and then and then That's one so yeah, and then one day I heard literally heard a voice that you have to paint. And I thought I was going crazy in my head. I was like okay, I'm going nuts, like officially going nuts. <laughs> and I said, something came over me. I just said, okay, universe, if I'm meant to paint, give me three distinct signs. I need to see it. I can't believe this. Um, and they came. And then I'm like, all right, I'm going to try. And so at first it was just for fun. You know, I was just kind of exploring different things. Um, and during this time, the spiritual practice started to grow stronger and I was um, channeling messages and like things were really picking up in that area. And, um, yeah, and then just painting at first didn't feel like it was connecting. So I was like, oh, 
maybe that was just all fake, you know? And then there's one distinct painting where I decided that I just wanted to paint my emotions, like what I was experiencing internally, kind of like what I was experiencing when I was a child, but as an adult, like what would that look visually? And I let go of the, of the idea of needing to paint something, and I just allowed the brush to do it. And that's when I was like, oh, I've never felt so connected to what I'm creating ever in my life. And I put that on the internet, and yeah, it was just the the um, response was out of, I felt like it was out of this world for me. I've never felt so um, amazed at what people are saying and how they're responding to it. And then I thought, okay, this is something different. It's not me anymore. Like, I'm not driving. Mm. Yeah, I'm not the driving force anymore. Mm. It just comes through in you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now it's, it, now the, 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 I would say the struggle is trying to keep myself out of it as much as possible, you know, because as you continue on, people expect things of you and they want you to produce a certain thing and then things become stagnant. Mm -hmm. So it's always trying to keep connected with that part of myself that, you know, is the driving force. Right. Yeah.